Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kwam Yasha Allah, Koholim La, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweshai, Bahashim Rakahakudash, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who do rule well and that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth and just want to say the water toward the Akim and Akwaf. That's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweshai to the best of their ability. This is Yahanan Awaf just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And, um, was reading yesterday and was meditating on some scriptures that I, you know, just kind of, you know, when you read, you want to jot down things that hit your spirit, you know what I'm saying? And do lessons to them if you know the spirit gives you the utterance to do so. So, you know, it was just on my spirit to, uh, I just Google, why do Christians say the law is done away with? Just to see what they will actually, you know, say or AI. So AI, you know, they generate you know, they, they pretty much, it's just a little AI thing. It's all right, you know what I'm saying, as far as Google. They give you, you know, um, the pretty basic information that you need, you know what I'm saying? But it gives you these key points as to, you know, why these Christians really believe that. And because you, you have Christians that really believe that you don't have to keep any of the law anymore because of, you know, um, the Lord was sinless and he died for their sins and, it doesn't make no difference what they do. They're already saved by grace. And that's that's um that's false. And it's gonna get a lot of our people destroyed. And um, you know, so it says, let's just get the overview from AI. Christians often say the law is done away with because they believe Jesus Christ fulfilled the requirements of Old Testament Mosaic law through his life and sacrifice on the cross. Now, first off, we know that his name is not Jesus. Because there's no letter J in Hebrew. There's no letter E, no letter O, no letter U, no letter V in the Hebrew alphabet. Or at least not the paleo. Um, these vowel points that you get today, those were later added to, which they shouldn't have been. But there's the letter J was invented in 1524. So that was 500 years ago. So we know that they wasn't calling on Jesus 2,000 years ago. That's a transliteration. It's not um, a translation. It's a transliteration. It, it, that's not the Lord's name. The Lord's name is Yahawashai which means that he's the savior or deliverer in the paleo Hebrew. And you can actually get that in the scriptures as well. If you just, um, you know, go off into, um, you know, the words and the wording and see what was being spoken at the time, you know, Hebrew, you know, Gabriel gave um, a Hebrew name to, um, his parents, you know what I'm saying? To name him. They wasn't, he wasn't a Greek. The, the, the angel didn't speak Greek to Mary and, you know, it, it didn't say, Hey, his name is going to be Jesus. You know, those are all things that, these so-called Christian scholars or the so-called white man came up with, they know full well that that's not the Lord's name. So that's, I, that's actually idolatry because what they give you is, you know, matter of fact, let me go back. When you go to images, this, this is the type of stuff that you get, you know, um, like pictures like this right here. They'll give you these pictures of the Lord being some blonde haired, blue eyed white guy. And he always got the, you know, that little sheep on their, on his shoulders. And that's not what the Lord looked like. See, you get more of these pictures. See, this is what they, they, they promote and give you. And Christians actually believe in this. And they don't believe that you're supposed to actually keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You can't just run around out here and do what you want to do. Now, are we perfect? We're not perfect. We Of course, we know that. And we are, um, you know, saved by grace. You know what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean that you have a free license to just go out and just be wicked as hell. Because I have seen Christians that have actually said that, you know, and, and pretty much overall, that's what they think. They don't really, they don't go hard like that. They don't try to the best of their ability to please the Lord in that manner. They just feel like, oh, well, I'm already saved by grace and I can just do what I want to do. But anyway, let's go, let's, let's move on, right? Okay, so it says, meaning that Christians are no, let me just start from the top again. Christians often say the law is done away with because they believe Yahweh Shai fulfill the requirements of the Old Testament Mosaic law through his life and sacrifice on the cross. Now, that part of the Mosaic law that was fulfilled was him being the ultimate sacrifice. There was no, you know, like our forefathers would go in with the sin um, offerings and kill, you know, whatever animal, you know, for the, you know, do the, the ceremonial things, you know what I'm saying, as far as the law and atoning for the sins of Israel. But the Lord made it to the point where that was not going to be done no more. He's the ultimate sacrifice. He's the ultimate um, unblemished lamb, you know? Okay, so it goes on to say, 
meaning that Christians are no longer obligated to follow the specific rules of that law and are now considered to be under the law of Christ, which is based on love and grace, not, le not legalistic adherence to specific rules. This is primarily based on passages from the New Testament, particularly Paul's letters like Romans and Galatians. Let's see what they got here. Uh, how they got that? Okay, well, let's just move on. Key points to remember. Fulfillment of the law, right? Christians believe Yahweh Shai per perfectly fulfilled the Old Testament law by living a sinless life and dying on the cross as sacrifice for humanity's sins, rendering the law as no longer necessary to achieve salvation. Yeah, you do have to believe in Yahweh Shai. You do. If you don't believe on, on Yahweh Shai and what he done, then of course, no, you don't have no part in it. You're going to be destroyed. And this is also, this is not for humanity's sins. This is for the sins of Israel. When you go into the Old Testament, the, the sacrifices that was being made, all the Levitical stuff, all the temple, that was all about Israelites. The, the Israelites were the only ones that made a contract or a covenant with the Lord. It wasn't all of humanity. So when you go into the New Testament, it's still talking about that. That's when you go into um, Hebrews chapter 8. It goes off into the new covenant is going to be, you know, for Judah and Israel. It doesn't say to other nations. It doesn't say for all humanity. If you go into, you know, the Old Testament, you know, it's being mentioned as well. Where that's being quoted from in Hebrews is um, Jeremiah 31. Same thing. It's for Judah and Israel. It's not for these heathen nations. So that's another thing that these Christians also teach. Okay, but it says... um. The next section they have here is not lawless. While the Old Testament law is considered done away with, this doesn't mean Christians are free to live without any moral guidelines. But a lot of Christians believe that, though. They, they believe that you don't have to keep no moral guidelines. You can just do what you do what you want. I believe on the name of Jesus. I'm saved already. But the scripture says that those that endure to the end shall be saved. You're not saved because you're not at the end. You don't even know. You know what I'm saying? So it's really very um prideful for them to actually even say something like that and they don't they they don't know because if they're believing on white jesus they're going to be destroyed because that's an idol okay it says they are still expected to live ethically and follow the principles of the bible which that's what we say you know to the best of your ability you know but but you got christians they'll argue you down that you can eat pork now because the lord he's he, he died for your sins so now you can eat an animal that the lord didn't even eat himself you think the lord was on on on, on earth um, um um chawing down on a damn ham sandwich you think the lord was eating pork chops or pig feet and shit chitlins and shit oh yes the passover is christmas it's my birthday we're gonna eat some chitlins come on man lord wasn't eating no damn ham hocks man Come on, bro. But you got Christians that'll say that, you know, they, they read the scriptures wrong. They don't have the complete context of the scriptures. And they'd be like, oh, well, you know, what about Peter when the Lord told him to rise and eat? The Lord, you get, no, come on, bro. But but that's just our people that's just wicked as hell. And, and that's how hard they'll go to just eat, you know, abominable shit. They, they'll make an excuse for pork. Our people love that shit, man. That's the reason why, you know, that a lot of our people got real bad health because they eating stuff that the Lord said don't eat. The Lord said, you know, things out of the water, you know, you should only eat with fins and scales. They like, oh, that the law is done away with. We can eat shrimp, crab and lobster, octopus, whale, sea lion, you know, um, jellyfish, whatever the fuck come out of the water now because the Lord died for us to eat those things. But I just wanted to just go off into some scriptures since we got some of this context. So now let's go into some scriptures. As a matter of fact, they did have that. Um, they had Romans um, ten and four. One of the scriptures that they try and use. Romans ten and four says, "For Yahweh is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth." Now they'll see that and be like, "See, well, we don't have to keep the law no more." But I bet you, if somebody run up on them and try and steal their shit, they'd be like, "No, thou shalt not steal." But that's the Old Testament. Somebody run up on them with the pistol and get to whooping them over the head. And you know what I'm saying? Talking about they're going to take they take their life. Oh, no, the Bible says thou shalt not kill. See, they, 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 they believe in stuff like that. Don't no man out here want nobody uh, um, 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 committing adultery with his wife. They'll, see, they'll think about stuff like that. Oh, no, well, it's not talking you. Of course you can't kill nobody. But that's a part of the Old Testament law that you're talking about is done away with. You see what I'm saying? But let's read it in the NLT for some better understanding here. 
Romans 10 and 4 in the New Living Translation, it says, For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. The purpose for which the law was given was, matter of fact, let's read on. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with, with Yahweh. So the purpose of the law that was given was for the, the, um, the atonement of the sins of the children of Israel, man. And the Lord was the ultimate sacrifice. So now that he's the ultimate sacrifice, okay, you still have to live morally. You still have to do what the law says, you know what I'm saying, to the best of your ability. You can't just be out here wild and out. Of course, if you go on, if you if you take someone take someone's life, the scriptures talked about how your blood um um you know should be um shed. You know? Let's say for instance if you know um adultery. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, there's a great possibility that, you know, that the jealousy of that man can get him, um, you know, get him deleted. When you get to breaking into somebody's car, oh, I want his car. I'm going to take his car. That could, that could get you deleted. Those are things that could get, get, have you put to death, man. Now, back in the ancient days, you were put to death on the spot. But see, today, a lot of our people are being put to death because of things that they're doing, man. And they, they just, you know, they, they don't realize that we're still under those laws. Those laws are not done away with. Because the Lord, he'll put you to death just because you live in this, this society and kingdom. Say, for instance, a woman, she she commits adultery. Okay, just because, you know, they can't do to you what, what would have been done to you in the ancient days as far as the scripture goes. That don't mean that the Lord won't knock your ass off. The Lord will still knock you off. The Lord can still get at you. He can get at you through a car accident. He can get at you through a damn bug bite. He can get at you by sending a pack of dogs after your ass. He can he can get at you. It's, it's not about um a public stoning. You know, uh, you know, like how it was in the ancient days, right? But anyway, let's go to uh, Luke chapter twenty-four. Let's get what Yahweh said about the law being fulfilled. Oh, where is it at here? Salakia. So yep, here we go, right here. Luke twenty-four and forty-four, and he said, "Now this is red letter, so we know the Lord is talking." And he said unto them. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So when you go to the Old Testament, the Lord is telling you that all the things that Moses spoke of about me, because he was being, you know, he was being um, spoken of prophetically to come. All the things that the prophet actually, the prophets actually said, and all the things in the book of Psalms, because you, you can go to the Old Testament, you can read all about the Lord, Yahweh Shai, um, in the Old Testament, because he comes in the volume of the book, and those things that were spoken of of him, him dying on the cross, him being betrayed, you know, um, um, you know, uh, just all these different things. Matter of fact, they may have some, uh, let's see here, Salakia. That were being spoken of that would be happening to him. So when you see you, you can go back seeing the law of Moses right here. They got all the things that would be spoken of as far as the Lord. Look at all these precepts. Look at all these precepts and the prophets. You got like, man, one, two, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three. You got about sixty, seventy precepts, man. Of of things that's being spoken of that the Lord actually fulfilled. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? These things were spoken of. Like, matter of fact, when you go to the book of Psalms, chapter one, I mean, chapter two, these things right here are all things that will be spoken of as far as the Lord and his coming, man. You see? So these are the things that the Lord was talking about that will be fulfilled, right? That's all that he was talking about. He wasn't saying that, okay, I done came and I done died. Y'all can go ahead and eat pork now. Oh, man, yeah, it don't matter, man. Yeah, go ahead and crack him over the head. Take his shit. Yeah, it don't matter. Break into his house. You can do what you want. You're still saved by grace. I died for you to do all these things. Matter of fact, it was a chick. I seen a chick. She was in a, a YouTube video actually saying that you're not living right if you're not sinning because the Lord um, died for you to sin. Going hard about it. She really believed that shit. You're actually doing the Lord a disservice if you're not out here sinning because he died for you to sin. Nah, man, you crazy as hell. 
Anyway, let's get this one in uh, Matthew. I got like 12% on my phone. We should be able to get this done. I only had a few precepts. Um, Matthew 5 and 18, right? So let's see what the Lord is saying here, right? No, let's start at verse 17. Think not that I am come to the red letter. So we know this is the Lord talking. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. See, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. What do we just read? Uh, the things that will happen, even, you know, down to him, uh, uh, his clothing being um, um, uh, uh, pretty much um, gambled for. Dog surpassing me. Man, there's so many of those scriptures, man. Everything that was spoken, his birth. You know, the way that he was going to die. Those things were fulfilled. But check it out. So we know that this is not over with. Check it out. Verse 17 again. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. We know that he fulfilled his purpose as to when he came on this earth. You know, verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. See? Because heaven and earth, we're still here. All hasn't been fulfilled because there's still more pro prophecies to happen. There's still more prophetic stuff that's got to go down. So he's telling you right here that not one jot or one tittle shall pass from the law. So that means that you should be trying to keep it. Verse 19. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do them and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So why is he saying this? If he just died for your sins and you can just do what you want to do now. See? Verse 20, for I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall, not, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because what did the Lord say about the Pharisees? He said, hey, hey, do what they say, but not what they do. Because they was telling the people to keep the law. They was teaching our people the right way. But was they doing it? No, they wasn't doing it. That's why the Lord said that. He said, you do what they say and um, um, not what they do. Let's see if I can find that. Because you got these Christians, man, they're not telling people about uh, uh, you can't be in the LGBT, all that. But they're not telling the people, um, um, you know, that they're going to be destroyed about certain stuff, man. They don't even they don't even teach any fear of the Lord. They just teach you that the Lord loves you. You're saved by grace. You can do what you want. That's going to get a lot of our people destroyed, man. Uh, trying to think how that, that scripture is worded. Been a minute. But anyway, I mean, the, the, the point is made on it. Well, let's see. Yeah, I can't, I can't remember how that one's worded. It's here somewhere, though. Let's see. Oh, yeah, here it is right here. Matthew chapter 23. Yahweh I speaking in red letter. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, Then spake Yahweh to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Right? Which will be, you know, the law, right? All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. See that? Let's read it in the NLT. New Living Translation, Matthew 23 and 1, it says, Then Yahweh said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of religious law and the, and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example, for they don't practice what they teach. <laughs> it's that simple. So, so this is right out of the Lord's mouth. So when these Christians get to talking to you about how you don't have to keep the law no more, you know what I'm saying? No, you better be trying to, because even the so-called white man has a, 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 a thou shalt not murder. You get to you 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 do something to somebody. Matter of fact, all you got to do is just um um. Really, all somebody got to do is say you you touched them. They call nine one one. The police showing up. You going to jail? 
So why does this man, the the wicked, the so-called white man, get to have a damn get to get to have laws, but the but the Lord's laws must be forgotten? Are you crazy, man? He's only he he only keeps a few of the laws of the Lord because guess what? He 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 allows adultery. A woman is supposed to be a man's property. But in America or in, in a so-called white man's kingdom, a woman can step out on her husband and, and, and deal with five, ten dudes at a time if she wants to. She can she can straight have, have a train ran on her, man. And it's nothing that her husband can do about her, about it. That husband could have done went to, to he could have done went to work every day of his life, could have been married for 30 years to this woman. Then put all his time, effort, and money. Millions of dollars, bought her a house, you know what I'm saying? Got the cars, you know, and sent kids to college, you know, and do all these different things. All the, all, all his time is going into, you know, um, 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 putting together a family with her. And she can literally get up. She can do it in your house. She can, she can have a train ran on her in the very bed that this man bought. And nothing will be done to her as far as according to um, Esau Edom's, the so-called white man's law. If he do anything to her, guess what? He's going to jail. Now that's going off. So he'll keep things like, you know, thou shalt not steal, you know, or thou, even though he's a damn thief and fucking stuff, you know, he's the huge, the biggest thief on the planet. But anyway, let me grab these other precepts here. Let's go to Matthew. Cause I don't have, I'm down to 11% on my battery life. I think we good though. I only got two more precepts. No, it's not done away with man. You know, we, you know, we pray for mercy. We pray for unforgiveness on a day to day basis. Don't get me wrong. Cause we're not going to be perfect until we get those new bodies, but you can't just be living like how you want to live, man. Don't let nobody tell you that. Don't let nobody tell you that you, you can just eat catfish and you can eat, you know what I'm saying? And the Lord God, those are laws that the Lord, the Lord still have in place. Now it's certain things that we can't do because we're, you know, we're in captivity, you know what I'm saying? But you know, those laws that you can keep to the best of your ability, man, you should, there shouldn't be no problems to you actually doing it. Matter of fact, let's get it right here. Um, Matthew 7 and 24. Man, we can start at. Let's start at verse 21. Matthew 7 and 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. What's the will of the Father? What he said to do? His law, statutes, and commandments, his will. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity. What's iniquity? <laughs> What's iniquity? Verse 23 in the NLT, it says, but I will reply. I never knew you get away from me. You who break God's laws. Oh, wow. <laughs> verse 24 it goes on even a little further therefore whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them i will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock what is what, what's that rock going into that's going up into the lord and 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 what he said to do man Cause you're going to have people that's going to falter, man. They're not going to you know, that's why the scriptures talks about this wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. The Isaiah 33 and six verse 26, it says, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, uh oh, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended. So when the troubles come, right. And when the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house, it fell. And great was the fall of it. See? So so that's a clear cut right there to that all that old, you know, well, we're saved by grace. We don't have to keep the laws anymore. The, the, the law's done away with it. You see, some some people just got that, they got a real bad understanding of that scripture, man. Real bad understanding of that scripture, man. And, and, and really it's because the Holy Spirit is not dealing with them. You know, because, you know, these Christians, are you got, man, there's so many denominations, man, to these Christians, man. They all got something different going on. But let's get one more precept. This is another one. Now, this is going to the last book. The end, the end book, right? Revelation 22. Let's see. Let's start at verse 12. This is a red letter as well, where the Lord is speaking. 
Revelation 22 and 12. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. What do you think the works are going to be? It's going to obviously have to do with uh, the things that the Lord spoke of. Did, did you do the work that I told you? It's like you're going to work for an employer. You, you just, you know, got a job at McDonald's and they telling you to, you know, um, drop the fries. <laughs> it's orders at the drive through and they waiting on the fries and you just, you know, you, you somewhere else doing something else. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what? Are you doing the work that I told you to do? Well, other than they're going to fire your ass. You'll even keep the rules and regulations at a man's uh, McDonald's, man. <laughs> and Jake won't keep the words of, the, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. Verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Verse 14, blessed are they that do his commandments. Uh-oh. So if you're blessed for doing his commandments, what are you if you don't? You're not blessed, man. That they may have right to the tree of life. It may enter in through the gates into the city for without are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So, OK, if the law is done away with, why is the Lord saying that these people right here <laughs> that's committing all these damn crimes or, or, or going against the scriptures? Why is the Lord saying that they're going to be, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, it's going to be a bad situation for them since you don't have to keep the law anymore. See? Verse 16, I, Yahweh Shai, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star, man. You can't get around it. So I just wanted to just, you know, um, do a quick little lesson on this, man, because you do have Christians that's out here that really believe, they really believe. And it's mainly because of what they're, you know, these pastors have told them, man. These pastors, these greedy dogs, they're telling them that, hey, you could just live, because the preacher live in any old kind of way. He's no example, you know. They front, you know, they'll front like they, you know what I'm saying, they, they, they doing the will of the Lord. But, man, they're not telling these people what's really going on. They're not telling, especially our people anyway. They're not telling, that, um, you know, uh, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you're real you know, nationality that your Hebrew Israelites, that the Lord's name couldn't possibly, they know the Lord's name couldn't possibly be Jesus. And guess what? They, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you it don't matter. Well, that, that's, that, it, it is today. <laughs> it, it's English today. Like, no, okay, well, what was his name back 2,000 years ago? Because wasn't no damn Jesus then, so who are you calling on? You don't even know who you actually calling on. They don't know, man. So these are stumbling blocks that have to be broken, man. When you first come into this truth, yeah, you got to rid yourself of every single thing that you ever learned from the Christian church, man. Really, in reality, you have to be retaught, man. It is what it is because they really do believe these things, man. And a lot of our people are going to be destroyed for believing that you, you're already saved by grace. Matter of fact, let me get that. Um, those that endure to the end. I think that's in um, Matthew 24. See, I was worded. Yep, it was Matthew 24 and 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So what's with this? You already saved right now. You're not at the end. Because it's, it's actually people that, 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 you know, that's into this truth, man. That you know what I'm saying? That they've been in this truth for a long, long time, man. And then they just fall out. They fell out. They just fell out and went back into the world and just started, you know, um, you know, them seven demons or whatever, them seven spirits actually jumped back on their asses and they worse off than they ever been. That's why the scripture talks about it's better you had not known this truth, man, than to know it and, 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 and you know, turn back from the plow, so to speak, man. Because if that was the case of you already being saved, why would why are the, all these scriptures existing? Why did the Lord say all these things that he was saying if, 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 if he just came and died and everything is okay for you now? Oh, just live your life until I come back. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm going to handle everything when I come back. You know what I'm saying? You, ain't have, you, know, you don't have to do no work. The faith, the faith without works is dead scripture. That doesn't apply to you. You just out here, just you. You're not. You, you. You're not disciplining yourself. You're not trying to do anything. Like that shit is stupid. That's crazy. 
you're not going to even deal with a friend like that. You know, you, you can't even deal with, a, you, you know, your, your spouse like that. Or your children, so to speak. Anybody that you're dealing with, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to, they're going to have somewhat of what they're about. Rules and regulations. Don't do this to me. Don't do that to me. You know, um, do this for me. Do that for me. Everybody got a stipulation. So the Lord, why can't he have one? See, this, this, this truth come. It comes with conditions. It comes with this love. Comes with conditions. You, you can't say that you love the Lord and you doing everything that He said don't do. That don't make no sense, man. So anyway, I'm gonna end out there, man. I pray that the lesson was edifying. With that, Kwame Allah and the Bible Boy.